Busy programme for you tonight. Hi, I'm Jim Lowe. For the last six years, I've been filming loads of fabulous musicians in and around the Worcestershire scene. I've got a quarter of a million views from 1,300 videos uploaded to YouTube, but now I'm hanging the camcorder up. Tune in later to find out why. And they're one of many acts that Jim Lowe has tipped for success. BBC introducing In Hereford and Worcester with Andrew Marston. Now he's had nearly a quarter of a million views on YouTube and produced more than 1,300 videos of local musicians playing live. But now Worcester's Jim Lowe has put away his camcorder for the last time. He says the time has now come for him to spend more time with his family. It's funny, sometimes you just have to take the signs that's happening around you. My equipment was starting to pack up for the third time. This was the third camcorder that was going. Family life was changing as well. Becky had left home and that just left me and Kath, so perhaps there's a bit of an empty nest thing coming in there. Sometimes you just know when it's the right time to go and I think you've just got to acknowledge that and just say, fate's so intervening. What's your swan song then? What is the last video that you've uploaded or well, going to be uploading? Well, the thing is, I'm going back to my roots, I suppose, how it all started, but I was just going to film family. That means Becky or Katie. The last video that I actually filmed was at the Great Malvern Hotel with uh, Mikey Mann, Lou Bolton. It was Lou Bolton's birthday gig, so he can put that one down on his resume. And Ruben Seabright filmed a gig there. I was having huge technical problems again. Um, <laughs> because but, of a camcorder yeah, packing up. So I tried to tape about four songs, got one in the can, and that's now the last one of that sort that's on there. Never again? I've got a thing about... You say you're going to pack it in and then you go back into it. It kind of just doesn't feel right to me. I'm the sort of person okay. that goes, if I say that I'm going to pack it in, I'm going to pack it in. All right. So there's a defined full stop on the page. Yeah. Even though it's tempting. Yeah. I was at an open mic gig on Monday. and um, So you're still out there? Oh, I'm still out there this year. I'll be still going to the Worcester Music Festival and things and enjoying every minute of it. But my agenda won't be about which bands have I got to film in on which slot. <laughs> Give me the sun, the sun, and I will feel much better. No gray up above, I like the blue effect makes me... So you mentioned the Worcester Music Festival there. You've done all the official videos for that. You've helped us out here on the BBC Introducing, doing our recording sessions. Uh, you did a series called 142, which was filming acoustic musicians who wouldn't normally get the chance to play an open mic night or were playing so intricately they wouldn't be heard at an open mic night. And you also did On The Record as well, which is a series which was documenting life with musicians in, in Worcestershire. There's a lot of a mix there, isn't there? You can have a YouTube channel, but I tend to want mine to be a bit of a surrogate local TV channel. I wanted it to be there for other people, not just for me. So I kind of put it there for other people's memories. Now, musicians are always in the very much in the here and now. If you ask them what their best records have ever done, they'll say it's the latest one. Yeah. Whereas I actually think that give them five or ten years, maybe when they've even given up music altogether that there'll be a lot of memories lingering around on that channel and I'm kind of hoping that some of them will go you know what, Dad used to be in a band and there's actually a video out, out there would you like to see it and I'd like to think that a lot of people will be coming back to that channel in the future If you could have a crystal ball and work out who's going to be big from all of the people who you've videoed over your years doing this who would you say it would be? I have to say, judging from the reaction on YouTube it's probably going to be somebody like Charlie Green now, a lot of people mm. are going to go, who's that? Because he doesn't do open mics or anything. Young chap. Yeah. Droitwich. Yeah. Droitwich filmed him at the Chateau Impney. He's still only 15, but he was on Britain's Got Talent when he was 10. Uh, yeah. He's had 23,000 views on, on my channel. He's being viewed all over the world. It's consistently being viewed as well. It isn't just a flash in the pan where he suddenly had a lot of views. It's all the time. He's a good-looking young lad fabulous smooth voice in the sort of Michael Bublé style. I actually think that if he was put in a boy band somewhere they could be absolutely huge.
23,000 views then. You've also filmed people like the Human League. Yeah. Does that mean he's got more views than yeah, some of these? Absolutely, I'm okay. top loader and, well, and song to song. And on about peaks, those people who suddenly come out of nowhere and just blow up. Well, George Barnett certainly falls into that category. I mean, I filmed him a lot on a BBC introducing session at Witchwood. Loads of likes as well and some fabulous comments from people in America going, is he the Beatles all rolled into one? You're going, wow, what a compliment that is. He seemed really hot for a while and views are just starting to trail off and you can almost spot where a record company would be coming in going, need to do something else now, need to get your profile back up and you can spot that from almost the graphs. Well, he used to be a case of texting you to find out the symbol of your being. Well, there's plenty more from Jim Lowe in the next hour here on BBC Introducing in Hereford and Worcester. Plenty of artists who is tipped for big things in the next 12 months. Find out who they are later. Listen to the best interviews online bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introduce As we mentioned then Jim Lowe is at nearly a quarter of a million views on YouTube 1,300 videos of local musicians playing live he's put away his camcorder for the last time because he wants to spend more time with his family I also asked him about some of his top picks of artists who he's seen and who seems to be going down particularly well on YouTube with the viewing figures. You'll go out on the local music scene and you pick up the camera no matter what, but if you were to create a playlist of these are the ones you must watch out for, who would it be? People like Baby Godzilla, they're not a local band, but they played locally, so that kind of counts for me. Their gig at the Worcester Mars Bar, anybody who was there would tell you they'll always remember it. I think they're touring, supporting Limp Biscuit now, and I think okay. they're still unsigned. That gig was absolutely amazing, where they were climbing all over everything, and to have a guy hanging from the balcony by his legs playing the guitar right wow. in front of you was absolutely stunning. A godsend as a person who films well, these kind of things. Well, yeah, it was, was a real challenge as well. That was the video I was most proud of as well. And yet, if you'd have predicted that a 13-minute thrash metal video filmed almost in total darkness would be my favourite, I wouldn't have believed you, but I was really pleased with how it came out almost documentary-like. Other ones where I've got a real emotional attachment to are nights where you just had to be there, where everything was right, the band were right, the audience was absolutely magnificent and totally into everything that was doing, and that would be um, Worcester Music Festival with Johnny Kowalski and the Sexy Weirdos. It was late, it was about one o'clock in the morning, they had the audience dancing, it was such a wonderful vibe, and I absolutely loved that video. Yeah, yeah. Becky Rose, hot at Snodfest. I know this mm. is my daughter. That was a brilliantly organised event. When I go into the on the record thing, when I look at the sort of technicians involved, that had two stages going from 12 to 11 at night, one act after another, everything on time, amazing organisation. It was such a fabulous day. And that was the first time that Becky had done an electro set and when hot was on, it was just absolutely brilliant. So that's another favourite. Give me the sun, the sun. I kind of specialised in making little snippets videos. I used to enjoy sort of putting trailers for things and the one I did for the Worcester Music Festival for 2013, again 13 minutes of all the acts I saw, I got a great introduction by Andy O'Hare that started it off at the beginning as well. I was really proud of that video and I think it really summed up what Worcester Music Festival was all about. The eclectic mix of music, some packed venues, some not so packed venues, but that's kind of part of the charm as well. Yeah. So those were some of my absolute favourites, but there's lots on there. I could go on forever with and talk about some of the bands that I've filmed. And just remind us then, it was all because of your daughter, yeah. Becky, 
how you kind of got into this in the first place. It's a strange one, isn't it? Becky's very first gig, at that point, I didn't even know how to use a camcorder. And I just went there to help lift the equipment. And actually, Kathy, my wife, filmed it with a camcorder I bought her for a 40th. And at that time, I was 47. Strange time to get into a new hobby. I'd never picked up a camcorder before. But on the second gig, Kath said, I want to start photographing. You're going to have to start using the camcorder. So I'm kind of going, OK, where's the on-off switch? Where's record? Where's the zoom? And so I had to learn from there. Moving on a bit, Becky did a gig with a band called Fat Boys Are Harder To Kidnap. Yeah, Jack I remember them. Haywood. I'd filmed them because Fat Boys Are Harder To Kidnap were doing a gig and they were just getting Becky up for one song. But then I was left with some footage of Fat Boys and I was thinking, well, I can't put it on Becky's channel. It wouldn't make sense. So I'd got this dormant YouTube channel where all I'd done was watch favourite videos like everybody else, a bit of Graham Bond or a bit of Genesis. And so then I put them on there and I thought, well, it looks a bit silly on its own. And I see all these acts that we've started to meet. They're all performing for free. I feel sorry for them, actually. They're all travelling for miles and putting on a great show sometimes in front of not many people. So I thought, well, I'll start filming them, give them something to promote. And then the channel started to grow from there. Well, we salute Jim Lowe for his absolute massive contribution to the local music scene. People like him really make the music scene tick and as one chapter closes, I can only hope that another one opens. Just a true inspiration and someone who's absolutely done it completely for the love of local music. BBC introducing In Hereford and Worcester with Andrew Marston. Be part of it.